Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh This is Statics Chapter 9 And Chapter 9 we will deal with Center of Gravity, Center of Mass And also Centroid of a Body Right um, So the, the, the objective for this part is to understand the concept of Center of Gravity, Center of Mass and Centroid And also to be able to locate and determine the location basically of, of, of these points Right. So, um, the if you have the slide, you can see the examples of real structure. For example, there's a structure of a tank design, right? And if you want to, if you actually work to design uh, um, the structure itself, and as we have learned before, right? In when we do the um, summation of forces, summation of moment. And normally in the question that we have, we straightway are given the point G, right? the center of gravity where that's the point where you have the force of the weight going down. Right? However, in the real structure, right? for example this thing, they are not, meaning you, you are not given that point G from someone. Right? You have to be able to determine that. Right? So it's from the shape, from the size, from the mass, etc. Um, we should be able to calculate or to locate that okay this point G is here and then when we do the analysis we know that the force is there acting there right so we can calculate the moment especially for example right. so that is one example of a real structure where we have okay, where we have um, Certain shape that we need to do, we, we need to understand how to actually locate the center of gravity. So that's an example, right? Another example uh, is shown in the slide is uh, SUV, sport utility vehicle, right? So this is a type of vehicle where if you um, drive in a certain speed and also make a sharp cornering, for example, um, then the center of gravity becomes uh, an important aspect, right? Because we do not want the uh, vehicle to tip over when it is turning, right? Normally, for many of us, uh, we might um, be familiar with the discussion of center of gravity when we deal with um, sports car or Formula One car, for example, right? So, normally when I ask in the class, do we prefer high center of gravity or low? Right? Most, most will say low, right? Um, and when I ask why, why do you prefer low center of gravity? Many will relate it to be uh, to to the to the car, for example, being more stable, right? The car is more stable when uh, the center of gravity is low. However, when I ask why, why why is it that center of gravity low, then it become more stable, right? Normally, I have never seen yet so far a uh, student taking statics that can actually answer that question, and that that's. That's not uh, abnormal, that's quite normal, right? Um, one thing is, um, most of us do not think when we hear certain assertion like that, right? When we hear that, okay, lower center of gravity, you will be more stable. We normally do not ask why, how come, right? We just accept it as, as fact, right? So, however, um, as an engineer, it's good if you can understand and relate how come, why, right? Now, um, if I have another structure, right? So, not a sport vehicle, but um, if you have seen a double decker bus, right? So, if you have a double, double decker bus, right? So, double decker bus, right? Something like that. And of course, if you look from the side, it's not a really that much of a problem, but if you look from the front, or from the back, right? for example, like that, right? Um, if you have ever seen this this tall bus um, moving on 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 the road, right? Have you ever wondered whether this will have a tendency to tip over? For example, if you have if it is going at a slanting road, right? Like this. Right. And when the bus is quite tall, right? Is there any angle where it will actually tip over, right? And that will be not safe, right? 
if you see this one will you be afraid that it will actually tip over right so um, our how to say just looking at it you, you you might think that it is about to tip over right however from what we have covered from previous chapter we can actually relate on how it is become more stable right for example if you have because normally if you have a homogeneous um, object right i'm not sure this is not probably not this is not a advertisement for this brand but this is might not be that homogeneous but you can say it is quite homogeneous right it's quite heavy homogeneous right normally it, can you imagine where is the free uh, not free body diagram where is the center of gravity right if it's homogeneous meaning that the density is um you uh what is it it's the same everywhere right it's uniform right so the center of gravity will be at the center right and at a certain angle it will if i release this it will tip over right it will tip over right because actually if you can imagine the center of gravity for example is here right can you see that and when the center of gravity have a force like this which is the weight right is it, hopefully you can see the size we're not going too big but hopefully you can still see right what will be the impact of this weight about this point at the edge of the tire from what we have learned before it will produce moment counterclockwise right and hence it will tip over right because that is the tendency the weight will create a moment tendency count uh, is it counterclockwise in this case in this particular case and it will tip over there right however when you can reduce or lower the center of gravity meaning center of gravity here for example the new center of gravity which is quite low this weight here let me use can i use different color never mind you you, you are following right so this w here about the same point is producing clockwise rotation right you can see that so meaning that it that the same weight but at the different point create a moment in the different rotation hence that's why it will not have a tendency to tip even though it's slanting in this way but the, the because the center of gravity is lower the moment it produces is still making it want to stay up something like that right? so that's where uh, an, an example of how center of gravity plays a role in terms of stability right so that's one 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 aspect right um, is there another example? There's a different structure that is shown in this slide also. Another example that I think I, I normally bring up in this class, in the class, um, where because normally we do not own a bus like this, right? But some of us may own or have seen someone that own, um, you know the thing? The thing that um, you can punch and it can fall down but it goes back up you, you know that thing that I'm talking about sometimes it's like a, a human size that you punch it goes it goes back and then it go, keep coming back up right so I'm I, just to be sure I'm not talking about your little brother that you punch and he got up back up that's that's not what I'm talking about what I'm talking about that like the balloon the, the balloon thingy right I'm not sure what's the name of it so basically it is filled up with air right so the question is why does it keep coming back up right i'm not talking about your brother anyway because if your brother keep coming back up he's he's a fighter maybe but why is that balloon keep coming back up right so that's also related to um where its center of gravity is located right so if you can imagine this thing something like something like this right um, basically most of it is air but the, the like 99% 99.9% of the weight is the water there right so when you push it down actually this is where the weight is right and hence the weight here will produce a, in this case counterclockwise moment that will actually rotate it back up right so that's again the application of moment uh, without maybe you realize it or not 
uh, in terms of where you locate the center of gravity in terms of how it will react in terms of certain position like this one of course if you puncture the water and it fills up here then obviously it will never go, uh, go back up again right but this is an example of how in real life the moment actually produce certain tendency for rotation um, that we may have seen like you have seen the bus here why is it safe why are people designing the bus and the the road safety etc do not feel unsafe about the bus because it is designed to have very low um, center of gravity so that even at a it's it sometimes I'm not sure how to say it but it's sometimes counterintuitive like when you see it it's logically you will see like it will go to tip right but because logically our our logical is uh, we imagine the center of gravity is there right but actually the center of gravity is very very low that even at the small slanting it still have the tendency to not tip right meaning the tendency is not here but here right so that's how we design things in our real life right so we apply all of this in in many application maybe you realize it maybe you don't but hopefully from now on you can see right when you see these things this thing or any other things you can relate oh okay that's that's what i learned in statics right so hopefully that becomes something that makes learning more fun inshallah <coughs> all right so what is the concept center concept of center of gravity right so i'll just read this first a body is composed of an infinite number of particles so basically anybody right this particle thing here this is composed by infinite number of um, particles right and each of these particles will have its own weight so it says here w d w right um, now we are going into a chapter where okay the zoom the focus is hopefully it's focused back again um, we are going into a chapter where we will deal with integration a lot right so um, the understanding of integrating elements uh, you should have um, some understanding now going into this chapter now just I just remember this if you haven't yet watched the video that I post earlier on integration normally because I have post earlier um, normally this is before we even begin statics I want you to revise on two things one is trigonometry Another one is uh, integration because we will actually use these mathematical tools in our subject, right? Normally, I think most students have already watched the trigonometry because in even in chapter two, three, four, we use it a lot. But until now, we haven't yet used integration until now, until this chapter, right? So for those who haven't watched that yet, please watch that first integration so that when we cover on we cover on this. Uh, it makes sense right you you know oh okay that's you you i think you understand already how to do integration but normally when people go into a university uh, sometimes they already forgot what they have learned before right just just to refresh inshallah all right so that being said going back here so center gravity is a point often shown as this which, which locate the resultant weight of a system of a particle and solid body right um okay so basically um if okay i'm i'm trying to relate to what we have learned before right um if you remember right for example we have already learned that for example if we have multiple force right um we can replace this this in the term of simplification right we can simplify this into just one force and one moment there right so this is fr mr right and we can further simplify to be having just fr and what is the location right hopefully you still remember this one so this is the same concept that is actually applied here where um, when you have uh, a thing like a body uh, a structure or let's say a beam here right this is made up by infinite number of particles but just for illustration there's this box um, element there right meaning that it is uh, divided into 
small element of this. Each of these small elements will have its own weight. Right? So hence it's something like there's a lot of forces that are going down. Right? So this one, actually, if you if you do the same process, you can replace it with uh, the same thing here, equivalent force and moment system, and also equivalent force here. The concept is the same, right? Meaning that this is actually the center of gravity or center of mass or center of or gravity, center of mass or center, right? Um, it's the same concept, right? Because uh, fundamentally, what we have do, done here is that all of these forces, the effect is the same as the resultant force, which is the same here. And all of these forces actually create certain moment about any point. For example, about this point, it creates certain moment. This have its own moment, force time distance, force time distance, force time distance, right? As a total, it is equal to MR, right? And this force location should have the same impact as this um, moment, which is the same as summation of all moments, right? So this distance is providing the, the distance to create that moment there, right? So in the end, the idea here is this FR have the same impact as this all summation of forces. This uh, distance here is where the force will create um, the same moment as the summation of all moment here. So similar context here, right? So the center of gravity is basically where um, how to say uh, the effect of the weight okay the effect of the weight I think is is straightforward because we are not talking about that one because this one is just summation right but its location is where it pro it it create the same moment as in the vertical force here right so from what we have covered before right when you have a rectangle you will see that oh, obviously it will be at the middle however that is only true when it is homogeneous meaning that each particle have the same force same weight as we mentioned about the bus just now right how come the center of gravity is not at the middle because the weight distribution is different for example if this if okay let, let's say here first right if this one is bigger right this one is bigger than this one right on the right side is bigger force to the left side we will expect the FR to be on more on the right side, right? Which will give the same equivalent moment as this one, right? Similarly, with this case, if the particle here is heavier than here, then you will expect F to be there, right? So that's how we manipulate the density or the weight of particles. Or in the case of the bus, we put engine, etc., the, the, the heavy stuff at the very bottom and the whole structure upwards should be very light material so that um, just like the water balloon not water balloon the balloon with the water at the bottom right uh, so the whole upper side here is carried uh, is having very minimal weight for example that's how we manipulate the location of center of gravity so the idea is just the same right so um, yeah so that's the, the idea and this is represented when we um, if you recall for this one, right? If you recall, FR is just summation of force, MR is summation of moment, right? Which is summation of force times distance. We are talking about 2D now, just for understanding. So, if you understand the concept, you can relate to 3D, then R cross F, for example, right? And here, FR is just the same as FR, but this D is, um, this D is just MR over FR. Right, we have learned this before. Hopefully, you still remember. This is from moment equal to force times distance. Right, so the distance is moment divided by force. So the same concept here, but in terms of integral, uh, integral uh, form. Right, so you you can see in the slide there, um, where you will have this kind of equation. Equation of x dw. Equation of dw. Right. And it goes the same for y, then you have y here, z, z here. Right? So this one, if you if you understand, um, x is the position, this is the distance and position, 
W is the weight, right? Um, so it's 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 basically here. It's basically moment di divided by force, basically, right? Because this is summation of force, which is the weight. This is force times distance, which is the moment, right? So this uh, this is actually derived from this one anyway, right? So if you normally we just memorize, right? But if you forgot, you can still hopefully re re how to say. Uh, remember it back again because the concept is just moment divided by force. So force is summation of all, all, all forces. In term of integration is summation of the area, right? Um, and then this one is the the force times the distance, basically, right? So that's the idea of center of gravity and center. Right? Now um, this is center of gravity, right? So how it is different is just that if if we are talking about centroid, it's about the shape. Uh, meaning, if in two D it's area, in three D it's volume. Uh, if you talk about center of mass, it's about mass. If center of gravity, it's about weight. So, so this one is center of gravity. So center of mass is just oops. Yeah, but I have to rewrite. Center of mass is just. That and center of um, centroid is something just like right. So um, the idea is just the same. It's just that it is with respect to mass, area, area for two D. If we're talking about three D, then it becomes dv, which is volume, and this one is center of gravity is about weight, right? So um, it is also shown in the slide. This one, this one, right? So. All right. Now, um, so as you can see, um, for centroid, it's about shape. So, about about shape is just if you have a rectangular, it's just a rectangular, right? So, meaning that obviously it will be at the middle there, right? Because um, that's the shape, right? But if you're talking about center of mass and center of gravity. So it depends. If this is homogeneous, the same material, then it's at the middle. But if you have, okay, this portion is steel, this portion is aluminium, this portion is etc. So it will not be at the middle. It will be depending on what is the density and then hence the weight or the mass of each. And then you have to calculate the moment etc. Using this equation basically. Right. So that's the idea. Um, so, concept of centroid. The centroid is a defining geometric center. So, centroid is about the shape. So, you can say that it is the geometric center. Right? So, it's basically the center. But geometrically. Right? Um, uh, the centroid coincides with the center of mass on center of gravity only if the material is homogeneous. So, it's there. So, if the material is homogeneous, for example, this one. Okay, the centroid basically will be at the center. The center of mass or center of gravity depend. If this is homogeneous, meaning the density of this whole thing is the same, it will be the same point. If it's not homogeneous, then it will it may be at a different point, right? So hopefully you don't understand this concept also. If an object have a symmetry axis of symmetry, then obviously um, confirm that the center of gravity is on that axis of symmetry. For example, in this case, for the centroid. We have two axes of symmetry, right? It's symmetry about this and this, hence it is at the dead center there. If you have something like shape like this, right? It is symmetric about this line, but it is not symmetric about this line, right? So it will be somewhere on this line, right? Be it here or here or here, you have to calculate, right? So that's the idea um, about the symmetry. In some cases, centroid might not be located on the object. So that is also possible. For example, if you have an object with a shape of when you have some hole, for example, right? For example, something like this, right? So the centroid can be here where it's actually just hole there, right? So that's also possible, right? Because it's center of the geometric shape, right? So do not be surprised if you have here uh, center of centroid or anything when the, of the, the the material is here, right? That that's still possible, right? But if you have something here, 
normally that's not possible because it, it should be basically center right okay step to determine the centroid of an area right so this step is actually related to um, the understanding of integration right because um, the equation here is integration so the step is how to do integration meaning how to get the integration equation and then solve basically right so choose an appropriate differential element da at a general point hint generally if y is easily expressed in terms of x uh, use a vertical rectangle element if the converse is true use horizontal do you understand or not okay now again i want to remind if you have forgotten already about integration and you haven't watched my video about integration to refresh about integration please watch that first um, because i don't want to repeat everything here right because that one is a universal about integration this is about centroid right um, so if you haven't please watch it first okay um, if you have then inshallah hopefully you can follow right uh, is it focusing back again? Unfortunately, my camera is this, the lens is broken, so it tend to lose focus. So hopefully, until this semester semester end is still working. Otherwise, I have to buy a new one. Um, all right. Now, just to refresh a bit, right? Um, the idea of integration is basically this, right? So, um, basically, if you have a certain area here, right? Um, what you do is you have to divide into element, right? Because basically, it's either or. So I just show both way, right? Either you divide into vertical element or horizontal element, and then you add the whole thing, right? Meaning you add the whole thing is summation basically yeah you add the whole thing is summation right but the way you divide is either this one or this one right so this is a vertical element this is horizontal element right so make sure you understand vertical and horizontal and I, I assume you you do understand um, because sometimes in the exam for example um, the question actually will specify that you have to solve using horizontal element or vertical. So you have you have to follow the question. If the question say solve using vertical element, then if you use this one, you are not fulfilling the question. Even though the answer is the same, because you have to you can use both. The answer is the same. This is just different way of calculating. But sometimes the question actually specify use this one or that one. Right? So make sure you understand horizontal, vertical element. All right. Now the issue is about this point, right? It says that use a different element that will make it easier, basically, right? So you have these two options. Um, you have to understand that with this option, you will have dx. With this option, you will have dy. Hopefully, you understand that, right? Because this is the differential of uh, x for the thin element. This is the differential of y for the thin element, right? Now, when you have dx, when you do integration, blah blah blah, it will be dx. Okay, this marker is already not good. Right. That's logical, right? If you use this element, meaning it is dx, meaning when you do the calculation, it will be dx. If you use this element, this is dy, meaning that when you integrate, blah blah blah, it is dy at the end. Right? So that's just logical progression, right? So some equation can be expressed both way some equation is very difficult to be expressed in one way compared to the other for example if i have y equal to 3x plus 2 this is y in term of x hence um, if you want to use this one it will be just 3x plus 2 or whatever right where if you have y in terms of some y function y is just replaced by that one right if you have to use this if you need to use dy then you have to uh, convert this in term of y right in this case it will be what is it x is y over y minus 2 over 3 right or 
something like that, right? Or if we divide y over 3, minus 2 over 3, right? So you can still have something like that, there, right? So in this case, both way it is not that difficult. Even though one will be easier to solve than the other, maybe. But you can still do both ways. But there are some equation like this. Y equal to 3x cubed plus 2x plus 1, for example, right? In this case, is there any problem here? No, because you can have this, right? 3x cubed plus 2x plus 1 there, then you can integrate. But if you want to use this one, with respect to dy, you have to have x in terms of y here. And this is a problem, right? How to get x in terms of y from here? Almost impossible, maybe, right? So, this is why from the very beginning, before you select your element, you check first your equation. If your equation can be expressed both ways, so just, just choose any of these. But if your expression, uh, your equation, oh, okay, I can express in terms of x, but I cannot express in terms of y, do not use element that will give you dy, meaning do not use this element. For example, if you have another equation where x equal to y cubed plus 2y plus 1 or something, then, oh, okay, I can express in terms of y, but I cannot express in terms of x, so I cannot use this one. Hopefully, you still follow, right? So, that's the first thing. Before anything, see your equation, whether it can be expressed in both ways. If both ways, then just choose whichever. But it, if it can only be expressed in one way, make sure you choose the element that can be solved, right? So, if you can express dx, so use this one. If you can express dy, so use this one. Hopefully, that understand. you understand that one, right? So, that's the first thing. Second, when you have selected, then you express dA in terms of uh, dx or dy. Okay, it's blurring back again. And it's a, it's a go back again, yeah? Okay, bismillah. Hopefully, you can still see. Um, so, what, what is this dA? For example, this is dx, this is y. Right? And then dA... It's just the area of this thing, which is the height times the base, so y dx. Right, so that's dA. In this case, this is x. This is dy. So dA is x dy. Right? Now, do not memorize this. Do not. <laughs> do not memorize that, oh, okay, for vertical is y dx, for horizontal x dy. Do not memorize because this is not always the case. This is y dx because this is y. But if you have a different shape, different shape like that, right? If you have a vertical shape here, this is not y. Do you understand why? <laughs> okay. If you take a, 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 a sample, right? Is it focusing okay? I'm worried if you cannot see something, right? Because this is critical for you to, uh, to see everything. And my camera is already in this shape. Anyway, so if you take this element here. Is this the okay one? Hmm? I need a new marker. Okay. That element, the vertical element. So, um, the coordinate of the line is here, right? Corresponding to this element because this is the line, the coordinate. Coordinate is x, y. Alright, that's the coordinate. What does this mean? It means that um, this is x, this is y, right? That's the meaning of that coordinate. X, y. So the height of this is exactly y. Hence you get y. But in this case, okay, if this is like that, okay. I'll 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 change this into if you can still remember it's the same line but if I change into this is the area not this one this is whole this area this is empty right so in this case if you take the vertical element right what is the coordinate of the line is here x y this coordinate right 
Meaning what? Meaning x here, y here. Right? So what is the height of the element then for this particular case? If I draw it here. This is the x of course. What is this one? It's not y. Because y is this height. What we want is this. right? So it's actually uh, this one. Let's say this is 2. For example, this is 2. right? As an example. So this is y. right? So if this is y and this is 2, this is 2 minus y. Right? And dA becomes 2 minus y dx. Etc. Right? So uh, make sure you understand the concept. Do not memorize suddenly y dx or dx dy or everything. Right? Why is it become like that? Because the height is y or then y dx. If the height is 2 minus y, 2 minus y dx. Etc. Similarly here. Right? This becomes x because that element is there. If, if again, if it's here, then this is x, this is something minus x, right? So, etc. Right? So, um, make, make sure, because I'm concerned because some students do not get this in the final, right? They, because this is the second step, defining dA, and then you will actually put into the equation. If you have wrong dA, when you put into the integration it, uh, equation, it will be wrong, and then you do the long integration, it will be wrong. That's a sad story that I don't want to happen to any of you. Right, so make sure you understand the concept. If you have any problem, any question, put in the comment or ask in the class. Um, clear out any misconception, any, any doubt, any, any confusion. Right? Make sure you understand clearly. Determine x and y. Okay, I, I forgot to mention, but I think I did mention in the integration. I think. Uh, I'm not sure because I, I've done that video a long time ago. But you have a different... Um, um, how to say x, y, z in terms of the notation so okay this is valid for x, y, z but we'll just show you x as an example right so you will have x you have x like that not sure what to call that um, you have x bar right um Let me see just now. Okay. And if you notice, I, I, I didn't realize if I write it correctly when I do the equation. But if you really, really check the equation, it's something like this. X bar equal to integration of x wave. I'm not sure what is the name for it. <laughs> but when I ask the students, sometimes they, they, they understand if I say wave. Wave meaning wave, right? And then the E, remember? Division of the e. right? If you notice, it is using different thing. This is bar, this is wave, and meaning this one. These two, right? Bar and wave. We are not using x. What is the difference? And for my class, I have been emphasizing that you have to write correctly according to the meaning. Right? Even though the number is right, from the perspective of student, normally they just see the number. Other number is right. But I look at the statement. Right? If you say the statement, meaning the meaning of the statement is wrong, then, then I consider it's wrong. Right? So make sure you understand the meaning. Okay. If you have any plot, let's say this is my curve. Right? So any arbitrary point on this curve, let's say this point, the coordinate is x, y. What is, what is that? That is this, this x. x, y, z. Meaning that it is the normal x, y, z. So that is any point on the curve. Understand? Alright. And when we have, for example, this, the, the area, right? For example, uh, we are considering the area under this curve. Right? This whole area. Right? Um, and when we want to integration, for example, in this case, we integrate um, using vertical element, meaning that corresponding this point, the element is this one. Okay, that element. For that element, this element will have its own centroid, 
meaning the center of the element right which is um, here let's say right the center of the element one element that center is x wave y wave right this one here is referring for the element the center of the element okay all right now so we have defined these two right what about this one this one is the bar is uh, the center of the whole area this whole area here i'm using the red one here so let's say it's here for example x bar y bar right so the meaning is different right so just x y is on the line uh, x wave y wave it's the element itself uh, x bar y bar it's the whole area right so please focus i'm not saying that you are not focusing i'm just saying the camera is not focusing all right so that's that's about this thing right so because the equation is so meaning what meaning this equation this one x wave here is the element right so we have to understand that so that when you apply in terms of the calculation what to put in here is this one and for y is this one right so again um, what is the first step if you still remember the first step of calculation is to divide into element so either use vertical or horizontal you one tips is you see the equation right if you can do, use both use whichever you prefer if um, it can only use vertical you use vertical if it can only use horizontal you use horizontal depending on the equation that you have that's number one number two then you define da right when you have the element da is the area of that one right so this height multiplied by this base that's number two number three number three okay okay why why are we doing this why are we doing in the second step you calculate da because you want this da it actually relate back to the equation you want this da right so next why do you calculate why do you measure this one x plus y is because you want it in this equation right it's logical it's logical if you remember if you understand if you memorize or understand the equation you know what you need to do you need to find da you need to find x wave y wave z wave depending on the 2d or 3d right so that's the third step where is it okay and then fourth step you bring everything go back into the plug in into the equation and then you can solve using integration right so there are several things that i didn't mention here but i have already mentioned in the integration video about how to understand the limit right because when you integrate there's a limit here right that limit hopefully you understand it's based on how you divide or chop off the area right this one meaning that it's start here and here if you use horizontal, it start here and here, right? So that's the limit. This is starting limit, end limit, or starting limit, and limit, for example, right? So, yeah. Okay. Um, example. So we have example. We'll use this to solve in the example. All right. So in the example, we have this here. Uh, it's shaped like this something like that x axis y axis y equal to x cube and then we have 1 meter and then there 1 meter also now I'm not sure why in the example if you have seen the slide they always have the same limit um, normally I don't like that because as an examiner, I want to see whether you 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 choose this the the correct limit right for the integration. So that's why if this is one and one, if you make a mistake, it's still one, right? So it doesn't test you, right? But if you have here one and then there two, you have to understand you have to use one or two, right? So that's my preference. But anyway, this is the example that you have. We'll we'll use, use this one, right? So the question asks to find centroid. Find location of centroid which is x bar y bar coordinate right okay it's becoming hot 
So I have to switch on the fan first. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for the delay. Alright, so, um, what was the question? Okay, so you need to find. So the first thing is, normally, uh, it's not normally, um, but I think for any type of question, I think from chapter 1, you have the three steps, right? IPE. Interpret, plan, and execute, if I'm not mistaken, right? So meaning that the first step is, understand what the question gives you and understand what the question want, right? And number two, plan. And number three, calculate, right? So what the question one? It, it wants um, centroid. And this is the information given, right? So you have to understand the implication of this. Okay, what is the equation that we'll be using then? Okay, I don't want the camera to lose focus, but if I sit there, it seems like it lose focus. Um, is it still focusing or I think it's blurry right now, right? Okay, so we continue on. Um, so again, um, in the three step of solving any question, right? IPE, right? Interpret, plan, execute from chapter one. So the first step, the first step is to understand what the question give you and the, what the question want at the final answer, right? In this case, the final answer should be x bar, y bar, which is the centroid. And from there, you should be able to tell straight away what is the equation that you will be using, right? So. In terms of the equation, so x bar is what? Integration of x wave dA over the integration of dA. For y bar is just integration of y wave dA over integration of dA. Right? So what I need is dA and x wave and y wave basically, right? Hence you plan. Okay. So in this case, because you have two, two options, right? One is um, vertical element, second is horizontal. Now, how to choose? You still remember? You see the equation, right? In this case, the equation is y equal to x cubed. Either way, it's easy to express. Right? There's no... Um, meaning that you can express, if you have to express x in terms of y, you'll have x equal to y power of 1 over 3, right? So you can express, so no, no problem, right? So it just becomes a preference. How or which element do you want to use? However, if you can do both, um, in some area, one is easier than the other. Right? In this case, for example, right? Try to imagine. If you use horizontal, the element will be like this. Right? If you use vertical, the element will be like... No, no, sorry. My mistake. If you use vertical, element will be like this if you use horizontal element will be like this right so this one is you can see that the height will be y this one the horizontal the length will be something minus x right so then you can see oh okay horizontal uh, vertical is easier for this question right so let us see if you see the slide i think they use vertical yeah so we will use vertical first and if you want, we can try to use horizontal and see whether it gives you the same answer, which it should be. Right, okay. So, now using vertical element, right? So, you have vertical element there. So, this one will be dx. In this case, if you take, this one will be y. Right? So, meaning that dA will be y dx correct just y times dx and so dA becomes if you you if you want to change in term of x gateway y equal to x cube so x cube dx 
Okay? So we have settled for DA, right? All of this DA here we already have. Next we need X X X wave, Y wave. Right? So what is the coordinate here? The center there, right? So going back here, right? What is the coordinate of the center of the element? So X wave should be what? I give you three seconds. Should be what? It should be straightforward, right? It should be X. Why? Because if you understand, X Y is here, right? X Y is that point. Here, X wave Y wave, right? And X meaning the length here. X wave meaning length here. Then meaning that X wave and X is the same length for this element, right? So because it's the same length, right? So that right. Y wave. In this case, because this is at the center, y is half of y. y wave is half of y. So, y over 2. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. So, it will become like that. Hopefully, the whiteboard is not blur. My face is blur, it's not a problem. Even though it will affect your attention, right? Anyway, so hopefully, you understand this one, right? Because we are setting up what needs to be in the equation right after you, uh, or, or you have obtained this so this one is just you plug in whatever you have here right so integration of x wave is x dA is x cubed dx so times x cubed dx over integration of x cubed dx right what is the limit in this case Again, the limit is according to how we chop, right? So in this case, uh, vertical first element is here, last element here, right? So from zero to one, that's the limit, right? Zero to one, zero to one, right? So basically, this is if I do another step, x four dx zero to one, uh, zero to one x three dx, right? X to power four is about three. So here we'll have what x to power five over five zero to one uh, x to power four over four zero to one. So is it still enough space? Okay. So you have one over five divided by one over four, which is four over five, which is zero point eight. Okay. If you have already established this one, the rest is just mathematics, solving, uh, integration, mathematics. Right. Now this one. How to plug in? So we have y y y wave equal to y over two. So you just plug in here, right? So integration of y over two. B A is. Okay. Here, it it depends whether you want to. Uh, how to say change into x here or here right but if I I'm just pushing it here so this will becomes x cube over 2 right because y equal to x cube for the quotient right so y over 2 becomes x cube over 2 so meaning that if I put that what's my if I straight away it will be x cube over 2 right okay I'll, I'll just x cube over 2 dA is x cube dx over integration of x cube dx what will be the limit? the limit should be the same right because it's okay do not confuse yourself because some students they think that x this the limit is because of x or because of y but it's not because of that it's because of how we chop how you divide your area into element in this case this is the how you divide so whatever it is x or y is still the first element is here the last element is there right so in this case it's 0 to 1 0 to 1 so integration of 0 to 1 x power of 6 over 2 dx 0 to 1 x 3 dx so if you integrate this become x power of 7 over 14 0 to 1 uh, x power of 4 over 4 0 to 1 so in the end you get 1 over 14 
divide by number 4, you got 4 over 14. And you calculate, calculate the value that there. So it's 4 over 14. It's the same as your slide. Okay, so straightforward, right? What if you want to use another way to use horizontal? Right, maybe you are one of those type of student like Alamak, this is too easy, I want to show that I'm good and want to more difficult one right. Alright, not a problem So If you use Horizontal, right? Okay, if we go back, right? Now, if from the beginning you understand the question, you find the central, you know the uh, equation, this is the equation, so that's the same, right? But when you, you go you go to the next step, if you say using horizontal horizontal element, right? Meaning that the element will be like that. Meaning that it is this kind of element, right? If that a kind of element, meaning this one is the y. What will be this length here? Again, from the other side, this is x y. Meaning what? Meaning this is x. Correct. And we know this is one. So meaning that this length here is one minus x. Right. So here is one minus x. In that case. The A will be 1 minus X Oops, sorry 1 minus X times DY You have this multiply by that one straight forward And if you want to change it to Y straight away Because in this case you will be integrating with respect to Y So X equal to Y power of 1 over 3 there, right? So you plug in here it comes 1 minus y to the power of 1 over 3 dy right so normally from now you can already see all oh, right okay yeah i can see that it's it's a bit more difficult compared to previously right um, okay so if you still want to do it no problem right uh, all right so again, what's next? After the A, you have X wave and Y wave. So X wave. Make sure you understand X wave and Y wave is different, right? It depends on the element, right? So in this case, okay, this is X wave, Y wave, right? What is X wave? Okay, we'll do the, the easy one first. What is Y wave? In this case, okay, Y is here, right? Y. This x y coordinate, right? Y wave is here, right? So it's the same thing. So y wave is y. Simple, right? What about x wave? Okay, this is where some some students tend to get confused because um, understand this. Uh, this is length. This is length one over one minus x or previously x or y or whatever. That's length. This is not length. This is coordinate. Just like x coordinate, y coordinate is coordinate, right? So if I'm okay, I erase this. Okay. Right? I want to make it clear. Alright. So if the shape is here, the element is here, sorry. Right? And you have to have the coordinate of x wave, y wave. And y wave, you already set up. It's the same. Y wave is y. What about x wave? So the coordinate here, right? Now, we understand already that this part here until this point is x, the length. Because this is coordinate x, right? And then we understand this is 1 already, right? From the length, you already know this is 1 minus x, right? Now, some students they divide that. Okay, this is 1 minus x. If this one will be 1 minus x over 2, meaning the whole thing divided by 2, which is correct. Right? But that's not the coordinate. 
the coordinate is not 1 minus x over 2. The coordinate must be from here, right? So it should be x plus 1 minus x over 2. Alright? So if you do that, you have x plus 1 minus x over 2. Okay? If you simplify this, what do you get? Um, so this one equal to 2x over 2 plus 1 minus x over 2, right? So if you add this one, it becomes uh, what do you got? x plus 1 over 2. Right? You get x plus 1 over 2 if you simplify. Alright, that's one way to look at it. Where you have the length. Is it clear from here? Hopefully you can see, right? That that one. Because it's small. Hopefully you can zoom in or something. You can make this big and hopefully you can see. Alright, so that's the whole is 1 minus x. Half of it is 1 minus x over 2. But that's not the coordinate. The coordinate you have to add x. That's one way to understand. The other way, I prefer this way because I'm lazy to do all of this. Right? I'm too lazy as I mentioned before. So, one way to understand is when this is at the middle of this value and this value. How does it relate? If you have value and value, at the middle is average. right? Do you understand that concept? If you understand, then you can follow. If you do not, just, just use this one. Okay, if it's the average, it's average between x and 1, right? Because it's the middle between x and 1 in this case. So, how do you calculate average between x and 1? You just add, divide by 2, right? That's how you get average. So, x plus 1 over 2, which is exactly the same, right? If you do the calculation in the red one here, where you have the length divided by 2 and then plus x, you get x minus 1 over 2 in the end, or you just average of these two, become x plus 1 over 2, it's the same thing. So as long as you understand how do you get x plus 1 over 2, you are good. And do not memorize, again, do not memorize. It will not always be x, one, x plus 1 over 2. If this is 2 here, then it will be x plus 2 over 2 etc. Right? Uh, so make sure you understand where the number come from. Alright, so as you can see it's longer. <laughs> Just to get x wave y wave we are already discussing too much, right? Before it's straightforward. Alright. Now we want to plug in into the equation. <laughs> okay. Um of course you can change right if you want to change it to y so for the x wave sorry this is x wave here. So x equal to uh, y one over power one over three. So y power one over three, then plus one here over two. Okay, here is where it gets very much fun when you do integration because you will see. All right, but I hope because I don't bring my calculator, so I I'm, I'm not sure that I can actually calculate. But we'll see. So going back to this equation here, right? You'll notice that from this expression, x will be more difficult than y. So we'll do y first, the easy one first, right? This one. Now, integration, y wave is y. Okay. dA is 1 minus y 1 over 3, 1 minus y power of 1 over 3, and then dy. And down here is integration, 1 minus y1 over 3 dy I hope I have enough space here not sure ok so from here of course I, I might as well just combine this first integration of y minus y 4 over 3 dy integration 1 of minus y 1 over 3 Dy, right? What is the limit? Going back here, right? It's the way you chop off. I'm not sure if that's a normal way to solve it, but the way you divide the element, right? 
So the first element is here The last element is here, right? So in this case, it's from 0 to 1 So 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 Alright, let's solve and see whether Okay, I have erased the answer, right? Hopefully you still remember, I think this is 4 over 5 Yeah, and then this one is 4 over 14, right? Alright, so uh, what, what was that? Okay, integrate So this becomes y square over 2 Minus y 7 over 3 Then become 3 over 7 here From 0 to 1, right? This one become y minus y 4 over 3 3 over 4, 0 to 1 Okay, so this becomes 1 over 2 minus 3 over 7 Right? 1 minus 3 over 4 Now this one is still easy because the limit is 1 and 0 Right, so whatever power here, when you have 1, power to whatever is still 1 So it's straightforward If the limit is 2 I, I will need to use calculator, otherwise I cannot okay, right? So here, okay uh, Okay, times 7, so you have 7 over 14 minus 6 over 14 This one, um, 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4 This one becomes 1 over 14 divided by 1 over 4 becomes 4 over 14 Which is exactly the answer that we have just now 4 over 14 So I have proven already that the answer will be the same, right? <laughs> I'm saying this because, why? Because I'm too lazy to calculate for x It's much more difficult But, okay, for your benefit, I'll, I'll try to calculate still, right? And see whether it's the same It should be the same, right? So we have proven, so I, I, I need this space, so I, I'll erase this Alright, so this is the fun part of doing integration, right? Okay, so X wave is Okay, in this case, okay uh, In this case, it's actually easier if I use uh, this one before I substitute because I, I myself I tend to get confused when I have this power and I do complex calculation. This one is easier, so I'll, I'll use this one first, right? So meaning that x wave is x plus 1 over 2, right? And then dA is I still use this one, not, not this one yet before substitution. So 1 minus x dy. Okay. Over integration of 1 minus x dy. Okay. For this question, it's, it's, it's not that difficult, it's just a bit longer. Um, it's easier because x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus x, right? So I'll just write it like that so that it's easier to see what is happening. So 1 plus x. So it's 1 plus x, 1 minus x, I think you know what to do, right? 1 plus x, 1 minus x So if you simplify that one first, it's still, okay, we have still space So integration of 1 minus x squared dy over integration of 1 minus x dy Right? Hey, sorry, 1 over 2 is missing, so do not forget that Let me put it outside 1 over 2 Okay, is there any mistake? Because Sometimes I'm human I'm still doing mistake, right? Okay, so half will take outside So we have 1 plus x, 1 minus x Become 1 minus x squared Right? Okay, make sure you do not make silly mistake For example, if you put half here You should have the bracket for overall Because it should be half and half x squared, right? Um, if you make mistake like Suddenly half is here without the bracket And suddenly after that you forget Half is also here, then the calculation will be affected. Alright. What is the limit? Again, the limit is the same as we discussed here, it's from here to here, right? So it's from 0 to 
1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
to power of whatever, right? So, yeah. So it is for the purpose of um, just to illustrate how you apply the concept and equation. All right. So we have this one. Find the centroid of the whole thing. The same question. All right. So okay. I'm, so we have y square equal to x. All right. So the question is. Um, which element do you want to use to solve? Right, and I think in the slide it shows how to solve it using um, horizontal element. Um, so we'll follow. Right, okay. Again, in this question, um, this 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 one can be expressed both way, right? y square equal to x, meaning x equal to y square, or y equal to x power of half. Is it in the frame? That half is outside, is it? y equal to x power of half. Alright. Now, of course the easier one, is vertical, right? If you use vertical, right? So, if you use vertical element, this is dx, this will be y. Hence, da will be y dx. x wave will be 3, 2, 1, x. Why? Because it's the same, right? Hopefully, okay. If you have done enough exercises, you can even imagine. Otherwise, I do advise you to just draw to avoid making mistakes, right? Y wave is y over two, right? Now I, I do not memorize. I, I don't put it because I memorize because I but I I still we can put it because I can imagine, right? Oh, uh, this one y is here, central is here is half. So that that's imagination, right? It's not. I do not memorize these things, right? It's not. For me, it's not safe to memorize because uh, it can change if the shape is changing. Anyway. So, x bar, the two integration of x wave, dA, integration of dA. Hopefully, you uh, already memorized this equation. Um, so, x wave is x. So, integration of x, dA is y dx. Or, if I want to change it to x, so y is x power of half. So, x power of half, dx. Right? So, x times x power of half dx and then integration of x power of half dx alright, what is the limit? Uh, if vertical is 0 to 1 right? 1 to 1 alright so in this case, okay, I'll simplify first x power of 3 over 2 dx over integration of x power of half dx so the summation so 0 to 1 x power of 5 over 2 2 over 5 here uh, sorry wait a minute I already integrated that so it becomes x 5 over 2 2 over 5 here 0 to 1 it becomes x power of 3 over 2 so with 3 here, 3 to 1. So it's 2 over 5 divided by 2 over 3. So it becomes 3 over 5. Right? 3 over 5. Now you can you can continue on with y. Y bar equal to integration of y wave dA over integration of dA. So you just plug in y over 2 which is uh, x power of half over 2 inside and then dA you plug in also inside and then you can just solve, right? Uh, I, I, I trust you can do that, right? Um, so, in this moment because I'm tired also this is already too late night and because I'm lazy maybe I just don't want to repeat so I, I, I take the the, the 
path of assuming the best of you, right? I do not want to assume the worst of you. If I assume the worst of you, I assume you do not understand, the hence I will show everything, right? I trust you understand, so I do not show everything. All right. Um, but I want to show the difference, right? If you use, just now you use vertical, right? If you use horizontal, so I'll use a red, red one here. If you use horizontal, then this will become dy. And then what will be this length? It will be 1 minus x. Right? So dA will be 1 minus x dy. What is x wave? Okay? From the one that I like to use is this x wave 1 wave, right? It's the average between this and this, right? Here is x, here is 1. So, 1 plus x over 2. That's average. What is y wave? Y wave is y, because it's the same height there. Alright. So, just now, I forgot the answer. You, you know the answer, right? So, please check whether it's the same or not. Um... So the same equation, if you plug in here, you'll get integration of 1 plus x over 2 and wait, this one is 1 minus x, 1 minus x dy over integration of 1 minus x dy. So I Again, I take half outside, so this one become 1 square minus x square dy over integration of 1 minus x dy. Limit or 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Still 0 to 1, right? Okay, if you solve this one, half integrate of that, because, oh sorry, you cannot integrate yet, you have to change into y, because it's integration with respect to y. So, half. 1 minus, so x square is x square x square is y to the power of 4 so y to the power of 4 dy over 1 y minus x uh, y square dy alright, now we can integrate so half y minus y to the power of 5 over 5 0 to 1 y minus y3 over 3 0 to 1 so it will become half 1 minus 1 over 5 over 1 minus 1 over 3 this becomes half uh, 5 5 over 5 over 5 minus 1 over 5 5 what is it? 4 right? 4 over 5 then uh, 3 over 3 2 over 3 so what does it become? 2 over 5 divided by 2 over 3 becomes 3 over 5 I honestly forgot what is the answer just now but it should be the same please check hopefully you have written written some, some things and it should be the same right if not please comment down below so that I know some some error have been made in this video right because I do not want people to follow some mistake right but provided there's no mistake here should be the same as before right uh, I said I really do not un uh, memorize uh, remember what I said but inshallah hopefully it's the same right otherwise I have to redo this video which is so tiring all right so concept quiz all right now in the concept quiz i just want to mention the species okay we have space here. now in the concept quiz there, there's a the diagram given right okay please focus uh, it's focusing it's focusing all right alhamdulillah Alright, so in the question, in the slide there, you will see some diagram there, right? 
where you have a plate like there's a pin and then there's a curved plate like that and then there's a roller here right now this question is from the previous chapter that we cover right where we have pin we have roller and then you might have to solve what is the support reaction there and there right however in this question you actually need to use this chapter first because you need to determine where is G so that you know oh this is false so that you can actually calculate moment uh, in the previous chapter to calculate this one you have to draw the free body diagram right where you have x y component here and normal here right and you have to also put um, force here and but in the previous chapter the point g is given right but in this chapter or in the final g might not be given but you have to solve g using this chapter using integration and then once you get the location of g you know where it is and then you know the distance right so if that is the question in the final the issue is if you do not understand this chapter or you cannot solve correctly this one even though you understand that chapter about support reaction you will still get a wrong answer because this point g becomes somewhere else right because that point is the, is is crucial so that you draw the force is in the correct distance and you calculate moment correctly right so that's how the ex, the final exam can be right i'm talking about exam right now um, of course i know some of you might not care much about exam that much you just want the knowledge etc right but for my student i think many of you also on top of knowledge you also want to score the exam right so uh, make sure you understand this one right so if you do not if you make a mistake in this chapter if the question is like that uh, even though you understand the previous chapter that we have covered you will get, still get stuck or get a mistake in terms of the, the, the answer and it will affect your mark so you have to understand every chapter that's my point basically all right um all right so okay the, the the quiz is actually concept quiz is actually asking do you need to determine what is the centroid or center of gravity to solve this question but that's the answer there right you need to solve for g right you need to solve for center of gravity because that's where the force is acting however if if this is homogeneous the material is homogeneous meaning that center of gravity and centroid is at the same point then you might just use centroid meaning that if you calculate centroid okay center of gravity the equation is different right? it will be something like x equal to integration of x with dw right so there's more calculation involved here when you calculate dw compared to da right we haven't have example on dw yet but it's you have to multiply something something else first right um, but if it's homogeneous then even though you are calculating the center of gravity but because center of gravity equal to center of cent uh, centroid in that case you can just calculate that one right all right uh, okay we will go another chapter but because my battery is dying i have to change the battery first before i continue this recording so yeah intermission all right so group problem solving in the slide right so basically i have uh, so for the benefit of those who don't have the slide i'll just draw the
All right. Oh wait a minute. My drawing is going out of the boundary, is it? So I, I didn't realize that. So let me try to do something that hopefully you can see. Is it inside of the boundary? All right. Okay, now the focusing is problem. Okay, is it focusing okay? All right, so this is the problem. So we have the structure here. Okay, the, the problem is not yet completed completely. So steel plate. density seven eight five zero kilogram per meter cube okay and then you have to find center of gravity the center of mass and also compute reaction at a and b right so at a obviously is spin and B is a roller, right? But before we can solve for that one, you have, if you need to draw the free body diagram, you need to know where the center of gravity, your center of mass is, so that you can put the weight there. And how to determine the weight? You see, already have the density there. So when the density is kilogram per meter cube, meaning that if you know the meter cube, you can know the kilogram, and hence you can convert into newton. All right, so. Um, our focus right now is on the finding the center of mass or center of gravity, right? Um, but in this case, in this case, because it is homogeneous, center of mass or center of gravity is the same point as centroid. So I will just calculate centroid um, to calculate this one, right? So yeah. Um, right. So the first step is element. Horizontal or vertical? So I let you, I give you five seconds to think of which element you want to use. Which element? Of course, I cannot hear you, but hopefully you have think about it. Right now, the thing is, if you use horizontal element like this, right? You'll notice that. Horizontal element here, the boundary here and here for that horizontal element, here, here is the same line. But line here on the left and line here is different, meaning the equation is different. So you cannot have horizontal element you add throughout here when the equation on the left is different on half, on, meaning half of the shape, right? So um, you cannot do that. Unless you apply what we have to learn next, which is um, composite, composite body, where you divide and then you calculate here and here and then you add later on, right? So as one single shot um, integration, you cannot. But if you use vertical, right? Um, the upper boundary and lower boundary is consistent, meaning the upper boundary is always this equation from the beginning until the end. The lower boundary is still this equation from the beginning until the end. Right? So you can use that one. And the only element you can use in this case is vertical. Right? So if you take vertical element there. Right? If you miss anything or you cannot understand, of course the benefit of having a video is you can rewind what I said, right? But if still what I said does not make sense or you cannot understand, do comment to notify me. Alright, um, so with this element, so if you draw the element itself, so this will be dx. Correct? What about this height? Hmm. Alright, so in this case, because you have two curves as the boundary of those two, so I have to label the, the curve, right? So let me label this one, 
2 meaning that this this is curve 1 this is curve 2 so meaning that this coordinate here is x1 y1 and this coordinate here is x2 y2 right so what is the height what is the height i think it's easy to say right? this height plus this height right um, or in other words okay how do we measure height basically is um, this minus this one you get the, the height the difference right the, the, the yeah. so basically it's y2 minus y1 that's the height right this minus this one y2 minus y1 right obviously of course if you see from the visual this is this plus this one right but um, this one if, if you this one will be correct always because you take a general right uh, the height between this point and this point meaning from here to here this height is this minus this right so whatever this value is whatever this value is when you minus you get that height between the two right so in this case if this is y is negative then obviously we minus negative value you add the value there right so not problem okay so with that in mind so the a will be y2 minus y1 dx okay straight away of course if you want to change straight away so the a will be y2 is this one right so y equal to okay if you put here y equal to y2 equal to 2 power of half x power of half right meaning square root of because y square is 2x y equal to square root of 2x meaning square root of 2 and square root of x right now my suggestion is always a ha have a habit that you separate these two straight away right because this is actually from 2x right but i think many students when they, they, they do not um, separate this meaning assign the square root separately like basically it's, it's basically like that right? um, is that you tend to forget about one of the one of those right for example when you suddenly you have x power of half but this two you forget something like that and so i notice this a lot when you are rushing in the exam so uh, i prefer to have a habit that from the beginning i always when you have square root, I just assign for both separately so that I will never forget any of those. Just a suggestion. Alright, so minus y1. y1 is minus x. So minus minus x becomes, becomes plus x. Right? Dx. Okay, so that is dA. Next for the integration, okay. I didn't write the equation, but hopefully you understand you know the equation. Right? X bar is equal to integration of x wave dA over the integration of dA. Y bar is equal to integration of y wave dA over integration of dA. Right? Hopefully you already remember the equation. So x wave will be what? This should be z, it should be x, right? Because why? The distance is always the same. So x x coordinate here, here, and here is the same. Right? Y wave. Okay, again, there's two way to 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 solve for this one, as we mentioned before, right? One is you have the height, you have the half, and then you plus the lower coordinate, or you just take the average, right? I I prefer to take the average to avoid confusion, right? So taking the average, so meaning that um, whatever here, right, it is the average between this value and this value. Meaning that because this one is y2, this one is y1, so I'll just take y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Whatever the value is later on, right? Obviously, this one will be a negative value, but the concept is that, like that, right? So. Yeah, that's the average y1, sorry, y1 plus y2 over 2, right? Um, but you will be integrating with respect to 
dx. So if you want to change also, you can. So again, um, all right. So uh, if you notice what we did before, right? Um, because it it will be in the format of um, like a minus b, a plus b, right? A plus b, a minus b, something like that. Right? So if you want to notice here. So maybe I'll, I'll just leave it as y2 plus y1 over 2, right? It's the same, y2 plus y1 over y1 over y1 plus y2, not a not, not problem, right? But because I see here y2 minus 1, so when I want to plug in later on, it will be y2 minus y1, y2 plus y1. Right? It's easier for me. Um, Alright. So which one do you want to use to do first? So. Let's say x bar and for the integration of x wave d a over integration of d a. Right. So um, integration x wave is x. So x d a is I'll take away this one straight away. So times two power of half x power of half plus x dx is it still in the frame? yes it is over integration of 2 power of half x power of half plus x dx Oops. dx right ok what is the limit? Hmm. What will be the limit? Okay, if you understand the concept already, it's, it's simple, right? So where is the first element? Where is the last element? That's basically it, right? So in this case, it's a horizontal vertical. So first element should be here. Last element should be here, right? So it should be from zero to two, right? This is two. So from zero to two. Oh, zero to two. So if you do this. Can you integrate? Okay, I have simplify first. So integration of 0 to 2. So 2 power of half. X power of 3 over 2. Plus X square. Dx. Right? So you multiply X to both of that. And then you can integrate. So 2 power of half x 5 over 2 so we have 2 over 5 here plus x cube so we have 1 over 3 then 0 to 2 ok so then you have 2 power of half x power of 3 over 2 so 2 over 3 here uh, plus x squared with 2 from 0 to 2 ok this is just calculation mathematics right of course I don't have my calculator so you can calculate until the end right so just plug in the value of 2 and then you should get the, the answer there right and according to slide According to the slide, is 1.26 meter. Right, so please try, have some practice, and see whether you get that value. Right. So that is for x. Should I show for y? Is this one? All right. It's not difficult actually. It's just long. Right. Um, so long and difficult is two two different thing. Right. Do not. Do not how do I say? Do not make a, an excuse if it's long, right? Uh, it's not difficult. It's just long. Anyway, so you get that one, right? So we'll do for y. Okay. Why? Again, even if it's long, you still have to do it, right? Because question like this can come in the exam, so you have to practice. Right? In the exam, you cannot say, ah, oh, this is too long, I don't know what to do, right? Because you will end up not getting any marks, 
right? So, like in this life, right? Sometimes challenges in this life is, is it's you have to work long hours to get to the uh, destination, but not an excuse. Anyway, so why equal to y bar? Integration of y with the a division of the a, right? This is, I'm not sure how many times we have done this equation, so it should be in your head already. Um, yeah, so if you plug in, so y wave here is y2 plus y1 over 2, so integration of y2 plus y1 over 2, and then dA is y2 minus y1 over 2, y2 minus y1 and not what over 2, sorry. Y2 minus y1 minus y1 dx. Right. Over integration of y2 minus y1 dx. Now, um, if if you can do straight away in terms of x like this, and you change it to x here, uh, you, you can do that. Right? But for me, it's easier to see in this format. y2 plus y1, y2 minus y1. Rather than uh, something like this, right? 2 half x half plus x, 2 half x half minus x. Normally, for me, it's, that's more confusing. So, that's just preference in terms of avoiding mistakes. Alright. So, that way you have. So, if I take half outside, integrate, so you have y2 square minus y1 square dx. Integration of y2 minus y1 dx. Again, the limit, what is the limit? It's still the same, right? It's how you chop your element, so uh, you chop your area. So the element, first element 0, last element 2. So 0 to 2, 0 to 2. Right, so now you have to change into x, right? So half integration y2 squared. This is y2 squared, it's straight away 2x there. 2x minus y1 squared. This one squared becomes x squared, right? dx. Um, and then this one you just become this one, right? So integration of 0 to 2, 2 power of half x power of half plus x dx right so when you integrate you'll get half 2x square over 2 minus x cube over 3 uh, 0 to 2 over 2 power of half x power 3 over 2 so 2 over 3 here plus x square over 2 0 to 2 the rest is calculation you can use your calculator to calculate and then if this slide is correct you get 0 0.1 for 3 meter that is the answer so okay well, it's not yet over, right? Because the question asks, what is the center of mass, which is we obtained already, but that's not the end. We have to solve for support reaction, which is pin and roller here. But that is previous chapter, so should I solve or not? I think you know what to do, right? I trust you. You have understand the previous chapter, so you can do it. I trust you. All right. This is my lazy self is talking, right? Because anyway, I, I my eyes is already tired. So this is twelve thirty in the morning, uh, in the midnight basically, right? Um, but okay, I, I'll just make, I'll I'll just go into some calculation with regard to this one, right? Just for you to refresh, right? Um, but anyway, before that, with your answer, right? The answer is what was the answer? The coordinate that oh, sorry, where is it? The coordinate that you get is one point two six, 
0.1143 now um um yeah in any calculation that you do especially in the exam uh, please just take 10 seconds to reflect whether it's logical or not because some some answer in the exam that i see the student give you should be able to tell that something is wrong with that answer right because it's not logical so if you have a shape Logically, where is the centroid? Right? It should be around here, right? Normally, because the area is shaped in such way, it might be um, towards the top a bit because of that shape, but it also should also be towards the right uh, a little bit, right? Something like that. Right? So if you suddenly have somewhere there, it might not be that logical. So if you have one point two six, meaning that it's around here. And 0 0.1 something, so it's around there, right? So it is logical, right? So that's another thing that hopefully you have you have the capacity to do in your final, right? To avoid simple silly mistake. All right. So when you draw the free body diagram, so this is complete. So you go back to the chapter where we deal with rigid body, basically, uh, chapter five, right? So when you draw the free body diagram, so you have the this thing, this thing, this thing, something like that, right? Eh? So basically, this is point A. So basically, you have the pin support, which is A X, A Y. For example, this is my assumption, and then you have um, roller that, right? So you have and B that, right? This require an angle, right? What is the angle? Hopefully you can see from here, right? When this is 2, this is 2, meaning this is 45 degrees, right? So, let's do this is 45 degrees Right? Or 1, 1 square root of 2 if you do the triangle So what else? Okay, so you have the The, the, the uh, What is it? The weight there, right? Where the location is Meaning the distance is what was the distance? One point two six, right? So meaning that this is one point two six meter, and then this is zero point one. What just now? Four three meter. Okay, right? from from that one, right? So yeah, that's the location. However, what is the value? Hmm. What is the value? Okay. What is given is this one, right? So as long as you know meter cube, uh, you can multiply, you can get the kilogram. And then you can multiply by gravity, right? So how to get meter cube? So meter cube is volume, right? Volume is just basically area time thickness, right? Thickness is already given, 0 0.3 meter. What is the area? Right? If you understand the concept, area is meaning area under the graph is integration of DE, right? Area is integration of DE. And have we do this? We have done, right? If you notice in our equation um, is integration of x dA over integration of dA. Integration of dA is actually this one. Right? So um, if you already have that one, so I, I, I already erased that one. So if you notice in your calculation, right? For example, so when you calculate, blah, 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 if you do not mix the two, right, until the end, so whatever here is actually the area, whatever integration of the A, right? So you just take that one, plug into this one, right? So in the slide, it says that this is. 4.667 right? So it's 4.667 meter square times the thickness of 0 0.3 meter So you get whatever in term of volume Which is this is meter cube right? So if you know already meter cube So meaning that 7, 8, 5, 0 kg per meter cube 
So if you multiply by something with the Q, you get something in terms of kg. And then you can multiply by 9.81, you get the Newton force, the term of Newton. Right, and that should be here. In terms of Newton. And from there on, how to solve is just using chapter 5 and before. Right? So basically you take moment about point A for example and then you can solve for N B. Right? And then you do summation of Fx, you can solve for Ax, you do summation of Fy, you can solve for Ay. Right? So the slide is there. Um, the lecture from the previous chapter is there. I'm focusing primarily on chapter 9 right now. So uh, I'll leave it to you. Uh, I'll just give you the answer for those who don't have the slide. So that if you want to try and see whether you have it correct. Right? So if you do the calculation and B, you will get 47.92 kN. And if you calculate AX, uh, okay, AX to the left is 3.9 kN. Right? And if you consider AY upwards, because I assume downwards, so if you assume upwards, you will get 73.9 in the Of course, uh, just now, if I assume downward, when I calculate, I should get negative 73.9, meaning it's upward. Right? So that is the answer for you to check. What else? Uh, Okay, that's the end of chapter 9.1, which is solving... Okay, if you notice, the, 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 the question only give on centroid, basically, the, this example, right? Um, you do not have any integration for uh, weight or mass, right? Um, but the concept is the same, right? Um, what else? Um, so next, we will go into 9.2, where... Um, it is about composite uh, composite area where you divide the area into several different areas so we will cover that one later uh, in the next video in the next uh, recording inshallah so hopefully you understand the concept here uh, again um, make sure you understand the equation make sure you understand the difference between for example x, x wave, x bar make sure you write properly um, that's extra important in the exam especially um, what else? And then you know the steps, um, selecting the element, and make sure you understand how which one to select, which one is better, etc. Um, and then um, when you have the element already, so dA is what, x wave always is what, so that you can plug into the equation, and then just solving integration. So make sure you also practice on solving the integration until the end because sometimes we understand the concept but our mistake is in terms of doing integration right especially integration of power right integration of x power of 5 over 3 or something make sure there's no mistake there right uh, what else so i think uh, yeah another point is the question can actually combine chapter like this right so um, the center of gravity or centroid is only uh, halfway of the actual long calculation like this right because I haven't calculated until the end. I just calculated until this point here, right? So that you can draw the free body diagram. So the question can be like that. And if it's like that, then your understanding and your ability to solve this chapter will affect your ability to solve other chapter like this, right? If you get this wrong, whatever you understand from chapter 5, it still gives you the wrong answer anyway, right? So make sure you understand, you do practice, inshallah. Um, again, I'm not sure. I, I assume that until this point, everyone who is still watching already watched the integration video first. Uh, but if you haven't for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but if you haven't, please watch that one also to polish on your integration, the basic one. Thank you for, for, thank you for watching. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm too tired and too, too sleepy already.